we'll have this discussion. Discussion? What discussion? This is a discussion. Coming to you from Denver, Colorado. This is Discussion Combustion Podcast with your hosts, Kevin Batstone and Arthur Raw. Hey, what's up? I'm Ezra the Visionary, and I'm back with Discussion Combustion. But let me start you off with something real quick. Being broke is like being invisible. No one sees or notice me because I ain't out of the parties, the best hookah bars, and all the clubs. Being broke is like being invisible. No one sees or notice me because I don't got 20 chains, a fly whip, and a bad chick. Instead, I got the same pairs of shoes as middle school. Hand me down shirts from my uncle and socks from my cousin. Being broke is like being invisible. But I speak with a passion. This is for the masses that are less likely to get a degree, but still got great hopes and dreams. Because being broke is like being invisible. Visionary. Oof. Woohoo. Oh, yeah. That's a DC PC first coming in with some poetic <laughs> rhythm. Kicking off 228, yeah, right? I love that, man. I love that. Welcome back, man. Good to see you. Hey, I'm glad to be back with y'all, man. Y'all looking good, man. I see you. If I'm feeling good. It's glad to be back. That's yeah, absolutely. Good, it's hard to believe it's been seven months since we've seen you last, huh? Seven months. And you've been crushing it, making moves. Hey, man, trying to keep up with y'all. <laughs> well, look, we're all in this together. Hey. We're all trying to you know, lift each other up. Yeah. Work hard. <laughs> you know? We're, we're professional fake it till you make it -ers. <laughs> Like that, That's basically all we fucking do, man. But, no, I, re I really like that. Since you opened it up with that, I got to just kind of talk about a little bit about those lyrics there, right? So everyone has been kind of down and out at some point, yeah. right? Like where you, you can't, like you, you would like to go out on a date, but you, you're like, ah, oh, shit, I can't afford a date right now. <laughs> or like, you know, I can't, I can't put on this stuff. So like beyond being broke, then like if, if somebody's broke, then mm -hmm. right. Spe it, it almost is like you're speaking from experience. Like it's coming yeah. from, it's coming from the soul a little bit. So then like what, what helped you, what would help somebody that's financially in a tough spot or, where they're like thinking about finances all the time and, and thinking down about themselves. Like what, what were your thought processes on that? Um, well, one is knowing that the self-worth doesn't come behind the money. That's why like, I don't have a chain to fly whip and being broke is like being invisible. It's like those things could make you seem like you're visible to the mm -hmm. world. But in reality, even with that, you still feel invisible. The moment you start to be seen is when you start to see yourself outside past the money and just thinking of the money concept. Because actually when I wrote that poem was back in 2017, I was sitting outside of a shoe store and I was looking at some Jordans I couldn't mm -hmm. afford. And I remember people just walking by and just like looking at me like, oh, this dude's crying for some shoes. Like, or they don't even really know what's going on, but they looking at me like I'm invisible. Yeah. And what's crazy, that same poem that I was writing at that moment was the same poem that got me up to Aspen. And I performed that for 500 people. Okay. And I didn't feel so invisible in front of those 500 people. Yeah. And not only that, too, after I performed, they gave me a gift card for Jordan's, um, for Jordan's store. And then they also paid me for my time. And that was, like, the first time I realized, like, that energy that I took of pain uh -huh. and I used it for something great, I was able to use it for a platform to talk to a bunch of people. That's awesome. That's, like a, that. that's powerful for sure. 2017 is when you wrote that when i wrote that 2017 wow so we're looking at what was that six years almost seven years ago six years ago and i i actually just recently recorded it because i'm working on a new project belonging meaning while being in purpose mm -hmm. and um it was just from realizing all my times of going to aspen is um I, I put together a project about mental health and i wanted to put that song on there because that's kind of what started my journey was like feeling invisible to like now I could walk in the room even if I have $2 in my pocket. I feel like everyone's going to see me. <laughs> so that was, that was like one of your first first ones. Yeah, one of my early. And, and early. now now you're doing like the cyclical thing. You're like bringing it bringing it back in. Six years ago it was written. Yeah. Now it's being, you know, re-scripted re here on, on the pod permanently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he did it like that. He did it like that. Not permanently out there. No, that's awesome. Permanent timestamp. No, and, I love that. I and love you guys that. did, and you guys are getting the first taste because, like I said, it's on the project. So, and no one has heard this project. I mm -hmm. haven't sneak peeked it or put it out yet and stuff. And did you have a single come out not too long ago, though? Yes, uh, just the other day, Origami. It's not on the project, but that was just something more for my fans. That's actually a fan favorite right now. I performed it on my show, and everyone was singing it along to it. Also, um, put it on my Instagram story. So I was all like, oh man, I need to drop Origami. 
Um, and that's just me showing my style that I could go like on a more because you guys already know since last time I like to go old school, new school, and that's a little bit more on my newer sound. Like, oh man, he's using the auto tune, he's getting wavy with it. Mm -hmm. Um, ladies' favorite, <laughs> like it. I like it. How much has the market changed, do you feel like, since you've kind of stepped into this business and where it's trending and, and, and kind of what you have to do to adapt and evolve with it? Mm, I would say it changed a lot because there's like a lot of artists in Colorado now. seems like every weekend there's something going on, different shows, showcases. And even um, as I started booking more shows with this app called Concert, I realized like, oh, snap, you ain't the only artist out here trying to yeah. get it. So it's like it pushes you a little bit to step outside more out of your sound. Like there's not just one sound that you need to adapt to. You need to continuously grow. Now, are um, because I, I think I talked about this last time you were on. Because I, I used to be involved in the hip hop community yeah. and doing all that, and it was always abrasive. Like I felt like people didn't want other people to succeed. Like there mm -hmm. was that whole like I'm better than you type of mentality. Is that still? the case or do you find like more artists are getting together and collaborating and and realizing that we could all grow together i feel like there is and there isn't because mm -hmm. obviously there's a lot of people who do work with each other but i feel like it's just like a artist thing it's like in any sport there's always yeah. going to be that competition like in football like you could be on my same team but when we're in practice i'm gonna hit you with the shoulder pads harder that's true you know what i mean even if it's not personal just but, because but that I want could you. be healthy right yeah a little, you know? and little competition is healthy the moment it starts to become toxic is when you start to click up and be like, we don't want them around, like blacklist them. Yeah. That's when it starts to get weird and stuff. But besides that, like I try to keep those people like out of my way mm -hmm. and stuff, or I try not to like stay too close to energy. I think you actually said something um, last time. You quoted one of the people you interviewed on our last podcast where he was like, I don't do this for the haters. I don't do this for the winners. I do this because I keep doing this. Oh, yeah. yeah and I, Gentry. Yeah, it's and like, I feel I like that. not. That's I, what it was, yeah. I feel like that's like the truest mm -hmm. statement right there because it's like the moment you stop focusing on everyone else, it's like you start to see your stuff buzz a little <laughs> bit more because people always ask me, like, who do you work with out here? Mm -hmm. Who do you this? And I just tell them, like, I do my own thing. I don't really got to click. Yeah. And then, it, it, like, people want to listen to your music more. Like, oh, okay, well, let's see what you're about. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and like I always say on this show, like, full send, own it, right? Mm -hmm. You're behind your stuff. You go out there. You perform. You're, you're working. You're writing. You are constantly cultivating and creating and trying different things. And I think that's the biggest thing that separates the, I don't want to call it competition, but maybe what other people are doing a little bit, right? Because yeah. everybody thinks they can step in the ring because, you know, everyone's climbing the ring because they think they can box <laughs> and it's like that's fair I, you know i'll tip my hat to that but is it consistent are you are you getting after yeah. it every day you know are you seeing results and but you do it because you love it at the same time love it. And, and, and it shows i can see it on, on your social media and, and the way you know your music comes you know through um and i think that's that carries more weight than just people trying to just get a quick hit or try to screw someone over the authenticity piece is i think what sells the best mm -hmm. and that's the reason i dropped like origami was like to kind of like feed the people who like all oh, want the hit side of it because the next project the belonging meaning on being in purpose that's more of like a kendrick approach more like lyrical more conscious i actually have a suicide survivor on there mm -hmm. that's my only feature he's also a podcaster from california uh og suicide which i'm excited was because when i connected with him we connected on like a super deep level like i had a brother who passed away he had a lot of people who passed away um his grandmother passed away and we had like long hour conversations before even working with each other so we knew each other's story so when we were able to tap in and he sent me that verse and i was like mm. oh man he says so much and just these four eight bars like I, it's like i knew him his whole life already in those eight bars but it's from conversations mm -hmm. of speaking with each other mm. you know that's that's exciting because <clears throat> when you're making music from the heart like i still you know i'll always forever have the mic on my chest mc underneath it and i i'll freestyle every single day like i haven't been chasing being a musician recently and i still have that urge like it's still in the back of my head like why aren't you doing this sort of yeah. stuff but ultimately music to me is like a way to express my emotion right mm. and you can't you can't fake authenticity like a anyone can read through that and that's one thing I've, I've always noticed about about your music and kind of the energy behind it it felt kindred to like how i used to want to do it and mm -hmm. and like how my freestyles are like it's not it's not like a uh, a glamorous thing always like sometimes we we have to say have like a tough verse that talks about you know failing a little bit or you know you know being addicted to stuff or yep. you know all that sort of stuff man so I can feel that through the music, and 
it's, it's good to have genuine artists out there, you, you know, and, and regardless if it's one person that you reach or if it's 10,000 people that you reach with the track or whatever it is, you know, if you have that, that layer of like expressing yourself and it's helping people, then, you know, you got to keep doing that, man. Yeah. You, you have to keep going down that road because it's bigger than you at that point. And, and that's honestly always been the driving factor. And I've always had buddies tell me like, oh, your music inspires me, or I knew people that were, like, stuck in the streets and stuff, and they'll be like, bro, like, I want to be like you. And it's funny, I'm seeing them drive the nice cars and nice whips. I'm like, you want to be like me? (laughs) Like, I'm on the bus, dog. Like, but then it's like you said, it's those words and those powers and Mm -hmm. stuff. Because even sometimes when I be writing, like, those extra deeper lyrics, sometimes I don't even know where that energy comes from, like, from, like, a higher place or, like, a vibration. Because there be some songs where it's like, I really look at them and I'm like, dang, I'm talking about the future. I'm not even in that position yet. Or I'm thinking of like enlightenment or like, you know, it's like you're almost laying it down before you're already there. Uh What would you say has changed? Because, you know, you mentioned before we went on mic that you're off alcohol for almost three, four months, which congratulations. That's awesome, man. We'll we'll drink enough for everyone in this (laughs) room. Yeah, Um, Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely. 100 percent tip my hat to you for that. Um, has what does that it, like impacted as far as how you write, perform, <laughs> approach things? What would you say the biggest differences are there? The performance definitely is the biggest impact. Of actually, what made me be like, yo, I need to slow down on this bottle, <laughs> was uh, I had a show and I was super messed up. And like, with the shitty thing is the only thing everybody remembered me for was like, oh, you're the dude who beat up the dude at the last show. I'm like, goddamn, like, I'm here to perform. Mm-hmm. Like, and that only happened because he broke my phone. That's a whole different topic. Mm-hmm. But, anyways, like, the performance was just horrible. It was sloppy. I was missing on my words. I was fumbling. And I was just so mad at myself. Like, yeah. even though people were like, oh, you did great. I knew inside as myself, like, that ain't 100%. You, you weren't 100%. That ain't the best version of myself. So then I had a show, like, I think a month after that and by then i was already put it down and man it, it was on a rooftop it was beautiful as hell I was overlooking the city it was next to my old neighborhood and i killed it yeah i did amazing i performed origami nice did the mental health song and um i actually freestyled a song that they thought that i was an actual song but mm-hmm. i was good at improvising because they added one more song to my set list and um they ended up loving me that they even asked me to come back and do more performance. And I was like, you see, I need to come at a hundred percent and stuff because the first time I felt so insecure and I was messing up, stumbling my words. But look at this time I came back clear minded. I was obviously only smoking, Mm -hmm. but like I did great. I didn't fumble the bag. Mm. Yeah. I mean, look, this shit is definitely a business, right? Um, and when you're promoting yourself, you, you're basically the product, right? Mm. And so, you have to be professional at some point. And I mean, I'm, I'm mid thirties right now. So I've been through life a little bit, got, you know, got my ass kicked a little bit. You start to learn, but you have to learn on your own. Yeah. And, and so anyone could have told you, bro, don't be drinking. Don't, you know, take your performances seriously. But until you went up there and felt like you bombed it and was disappointed in yourself, like you weren't going to change until that you happened. You have to feel that pain. Yeah. You have to like, be like, dog, I, I'm being a piece of shit right now. Like, I I could be way better right now. And until you have those kind of self-thoughts where you're kind of beating yourself up slightly, like, I'm all for taking some beating myself up until I can become stronger as an individual. Like, we can't be too hard on ourselves, of course, but it's good to notice that kind of stuff, at least. And even in this music industry, they always talk about, like, we want to do change and do better. It's like you got to change yourself and stuff because, like, that's maybe another reason, like, a lot of people haven't made it in this city is like they ain't really living how they speak and they might have some lyrics that are super deep but then you see them at the club every weekend Mm -hmm. or you see them arguing about their baby mama or something you know what i mean it's like at some point you you gotta like start to level up in life and stuff and that's why i'm even the music stuff i i even though it seems like i'm still going 100 percent, i took a little break to focus on my life stuff and build on outside businesses so like if i'm happy like in my environment i'm gonna be happy musically and it's going to be easier to create like oh my bills are paid oh i have this in order oh mm-hmm. my mom's taking care of oh, i could go to the studio today i have this to talk about mm-hmm. i feel like that's again it goes back to that authenticity piece and living yeah. and translating that into music and art and things of that nature you know i'm not well versed in in you know the hip-hop rap community so i'm kind of like i always like to 
tap in and see what's going on and where the industry is going because we've had a lot we've had a lot of guys on this program that, yeah. that create music in this city and they've all been super humble so nice you know that's a big takeaway that i've seen in the music business from the guys we've had on this yeah. program at least um you know and it's, it's just kind of interesting to see the market trends and where it's going and how it's happening what people are doing are people talking shit are they you know not authentic right yeah. i mean there's got to be a lot of that and that, i think that's just the entertainment business in general i think we see that across the board whether it's podcasting whether it's music whatever the case may be the authenticity piece i feel like is slipping away slowly and it's and I, I'm, like i'm saying it's like is if you focus in on it and stuff because it's like it is who you surround yourself with like if you're surrounding yourself with 10 people that are complaining you won't be the 11th one that's not doing nothing <laughs> you know but if you surround yourself with people that are trying to build that are consistently making moves and stuff that's why even too it's always important to pay someone for their time like a lot of people talk about building teams and building this but the only time they want to like get someone on their thing is like when they want them to do something for free or out of respect and it's all like Nah, like, I'm on my higher video dude, I'm going to pay for the time. If I'm a video guy, I'm going to pay for the time. Mm-hmm. It's like, we're, we're all growing up. We all got things to do. And it's like, you got to respect people's time in the industry that they're in as well. Yeah, it almost goes back to, like, a term that I, I grew up around was paying your dues a little bit, mm-hmm. right? Not having to hand it to you, right? Putting in the work, taking care of the folks around you, you know, and, and, and yeah, compensating the folks that have helped you get along the way, whether that's, you know, wh- whoever, whether it's equipment, your photo guy, whoever, you know, you treat it that way. You treat it like a business and treat everyone with respect. It, I just, I feel like that goes a lot further than piggybacking off some bullshit or trying to rip someone down and, you know, leapfrog their success. The authenticity piece, man, I can't drive that home enough. Right? I know you agree with me on that. Yeah, I mean, we could we could have an entire show just on the why being authentic not only creates this massive wave that everyone can ride on, like, you're, like, perpetually surfing on this massive wave when you're super authentic, right? Yeah. But then not only that, but sustainable success. Mm-hmm. And then also uh, self-critiquing and, and self-growth. Like, when you're truly authentic, like, you're being real with yourself. And then you're being like, I'm being a dumbass with this thing or that thing. Or, like, you know, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not showing my whole heart and soul when I'm dating right now or, like, what whatever it is. Mm. So, like, whenever you're being authentic, it opens up the door to having a deeper level of like Mm self-reflection which is important right and so many people ignore their own thoughts they're not in their own head that's one thing that's great about being a lyricist and like being poetic and writing is is you are in your head like you are expressing your thoughts like that's why i love freestyling because it it gets it off my chest like i can say it out loud and like instead of just being in here so yeah being authentic is not easy like you, we talk about it all the time, but you got to be vulnerable to be authentic. Like yeah. you have to take it on the chin and be like, yeah, that was an L like I fucked up there, you know, but, but then people things. respect it because no one's perfect and everyone can tell, like if I started playing a character on this show, everyone would be able to fucking tell, like, that's not Arthur chained up Arthur. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I, I started doing like the flavor flavor clocks or some shit, you know, I got, I mean, this thing, honestly, bro, was super Five fucking light this, chains. Th- this thing was super fucking cheap. What I'm wearing right now. Like it's not even that flashy, but yeah, being, being real though, man, it's, um, it's one of those things that is easy to talk about, yep. Yep. but if you're going to actually walk that until you die, like, you're going to be on this fucking different kind of path that and, everyone can feel. And that's what I'm saying about, like, sometimes, and because I thought this before, like, I need to chase this in music. I need to do this in music. Sometimes stepping back and, like, connecting back with those people, your family, your friends. And even if you ain't in the best terms with your family, try to build those relationships mm-hmm. and stuff. Try to create those people around you because you start to realize the more good people you have around you, the less room you have for the fake and you're able to call out those mm. things like I don't want that around me or like you know you have you keep those one like I'd rather have a small circle than a big circle I can't trust. Well, I agree yeah. with that 100 yeah. percent I mean I, I've showed my tattoo on this program so many times I probably did it last time you're on <laughs> beyond blood I got it on my arm it means a lot yeah. you know it means a lot it's about the brotherhood it's about the people you surround yourself with friends and family make you the richest man I believe in all that stuff you know mm-hmm. and, and yeah it does it it's not you know for me it's not about uh you know quantity it's about quality mm. right so it's not oh i have you know x amount of followers sure that's all good in the business that we do yeah. but what's the quality of the interactions that we're having and, mm-hmm. and where we're building together for sure mm-hmm. it, it means more when you have somebody come up after you're done doing what you're doing or like they email you on like a song or, or whatever it is and then they're like hey you know that sentence really struck a chord with me and you got to stay humble when you are making an impact, though, because you're for like 
I'll speak from, I'm fortunate that I'm able to help make an impact in people's lives. Mm-hmm. And I don't expect to do that, yep. but it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, I know that I have to walk this path right now and be honest with myself. And that's where it stems from. It's not for anybody else. Like, like we have to live for ourselves first. Like yeah. it's okay to be selfish, to take care of yourself. And then, and then you can help other lives blossom, Yeah, you know, but it, it's, it's a hard path to walk. Um, one area that was interesting for me when I, cause I haven't released a song in a while. And sometimes mm-hmm. I listen to my older shit and I'll, I'll be like listening to it and I'll realize like, man, I really had the gusto back then. Like I was really going for it back then. Like, you know, why'd I fall off or, or this and that, or, or yeah. how, how was I seeing that? And then still failed in the future after I was on this level with my lyrics. Right. So I've kind of had that journey where it's like, shit, I, I was more back in the day than I was, you know, a couple months ago. Like, I feel like I'm my best version right now, but I have been through those areas where it's like, Mm. damn, my old lyricist who I used to be, like that person was actually getting it more than I'm getting it right now. Like when I was in all my dumb shit. Yeah. And then like, you look back at your old lyrics and you're like, dude, he was better than me. (laughs) Like, do you, do you ever have those moments where you're like, shit, like my old self was fire. Like what's going on? I I do have that because I've been lucky enough to somehow back up my, iPad since like 2013 so uh-huh. I still have lyrics from back in the day and I do see some stuff for like I noticed I was more like mentally physical like more like like that lyrics and stuff and nowadays it seems like I try to be more cool with it more uh-huh. laid back and not like try to stress it as much but yeah you're right it seems like back then I was like trying to murder everybody in the room make sure I had the best but that also gets like stressful though too because if you uh-huh. always like trying to like outdo everybody and outdo this it's like you gonna burn out mm-hmm. you're gonna burn out because you're giving a hundred percent like for no reason mm. burnout is no good for sure yeah. I've been there it, it, it kicks your ass. So you, you know? got burnt out last weekend. Oh, fuck. Texas kicked my ass. I love and you, Texas. Texas he, he was, he was doing it. He was doing it out there. Kicked my ass, Texas. So, I mean, that's one version of burnout. But just in general, you know, when you're just yeah. constantly running and running, you have to be places and you got songs to write and all this stuff and the pressure. I just feel like that's not the best time to sit down and write. But when you have, you know, record deals or you have to come up with X amount of content. I mean, even like in our you know situation, we got to do you know, two shows a week, I do three a week, like we have to deliver. And sometimes those deadlines can get overwhelming and you can get burnt out easy. And it's, you start to forget to, you know, not take care of yourself or stuff like that. And that's where things start falling by the wayside, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, even since then, like you said, we have people like counting on you recently. I started my label, Worldwide Visionaries, and I have uh, four artists that are under, you know, working with me and stuff. And like it's great. being the leader, it's like, oh, now nah, I have more responsibilities and stuff. And like even actually we, we went this weekend to go make beats and stuff. And my buddy was like, we didn't join you just because you're the leader. We joined you because you have the vision and mm-hmm. we see the moves that you're making and we want to be part of the team and build up with you. And I was like, you know what? Like it made me realize like, oh, like, this is bigger than me, and, like, I actually do have people counting on me, and I want to lead them down the right way, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't want to just, like, be, like, oh, be a lazy person. I want to be able to help them and build up as much as I built myself up. That's great. No, that's great. And, yeah, taking that team lead, man, that does. It puts a little bit of pressure on yourself, you know? Got to have some answers. Got to have some, uh, you know, creative visions and direction and what does that look like exactly? So, I mean, as far as where that's headed, if, if you want to get into that. Um, so right now we're getting ready to roll out our first artist, Ovin Esco. Um, he's going to be releasing his first music here in September. He hasn't put no music out. Okay, let's go. So I'm helping him put Hell his yeah. music on all platforms. So he's about to debut. He's about to debut. Oh, shit. Um, my other buddy, <laughs> I'm excited. He just got out of prison. Um, and he's been in and out since he was 13. But this time he's ready to take his career serious. And... Um, I've been a person he's always leaned on and stuff. Nice. Even when he was in there, we were on phone calls. He was singing songs mm-hmm. to me, and he decided when he got out, he wanted to be a uh, part of the label and stuff. His name is Sticky Styles. I'm excited for all oh, man. His voice, yeah, he has a voice of an angel, dog. It's crazy <laughs> when the world hears that shit. Y'all be ready for it. But he's another artist. I got a DJ on there. There, his name is Gage, also known as DJ Axel. And then uh, the other one is a beat maker, Cam Brown Self. Um, each very good at all their own talents, but the cool thing about it is like they're all ready to debut. Mm-hmm. So I'm just helping them roll out and pull out out their projects and stuff because they all want to roll out different. Like Marquise is ready to drop an album, um, Ovin's ready to do singles, mm. and Cam just wants to stay in the background and do the beats for all of us. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like we all playing our roles and stuff. And me, for myself personally, I'm getting ready to drop three albums, and after I drop those three albums. 
I'm going to go 100% on my artists and stuff because my albums are pretty much ready. Um, Belonging, Mean, Mean, and Wellbeing, and Purpose will be out next month. And then around December, I'm dropping another one called Before the Rave, which is going to be like something different, more melodic. Mm -hmm. Y'all going to hear a really crazy sound. I'm actually nice. really proud of myself for that one because the songwriting abilities on that one are beyond this world and then i have another one called wavy tapes and that's just for my people that want like fun music excited music okay because like i said love junkie i might not tap into that love junkie until like years from now because i'm still letting that cultivate 23 yeah. songs is a lot i'm still going back and listening to what i did on that project mm -hmm. but these next three projects they're all like three different elements on my side i say one is conscience one is hype and then one is just like experimental and stuff and but with that i want to be able to cultivate my artists and take them to the next level too besides just dropping singles um sponsorships mm -hmm. uh click them up on different opportunities and stuff because they've only been in their bedroom and i want to take them outside to the world and show them like now we could make more moves and be structured and stuff so mm -hmm. even them just uh recording their first few songs it's sounding really good man that's exciting really that's a good. lot of momentum a lot in the stable yeah, yeah none of that was happening seven months ago man and th that's why it's fun having repeat guests on here because you know we, we get to know you you're in our network yeah. you know we've been put you've been pushing us for seven months we've been pushing you for seven months and then yeah. to come back and hear the new news man it, it, it makes me excited yeah because because here's the thing it's like what you're talking about being um around the right people and and trying to do your best and and what Look, this shit ain't easy. Like making the label, <laughs> getting the LLC, you cost oh, money, man. all that, all this shit, and it's like, no, nah, that was a headache. And, and then people are all like, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, you know he's doing it. And then it's like, well, until you actually try, like a lot of people think, oh, what Kevin Arthur does is so easy. They just sit there and and they sit there and drink beers and talk to people and it looks like so much fun and easy. And it is. This part is is like that. The this editing, the part. Yeah, yeah, uploading, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you can come in on that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just it's yeah, it's a lot of work, and and yeah. you're you know you're obviously seeing it. But I like it, man. I mean, I like I like the vision. I like where you're headed with it, um, and and having some people in the stable now, right, mm -hmm. to roll out. And then you got these albums back stacked. I mean, you're ready to rip tater chip, as I yeah. like to say. And like um, I said, I just wanted to stack it up so it's like once I release my projects and like put myself out there, it's like because my artists are still taking time to develop and stuff, mm -hmm. and I ain't going to rush them. And so as long as we put something out, and I've like I said, I don't really get writer's block. You know what I mean? If anything, I get more hungry, especially uh, the the third album that I'm getting ready to drop before the rave. I don't know. I'm reeling on something special right there. Like <laughs> the beats that I, I'll probably show you guys after the pod and stuff. Okay, nice. That's exclusive, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get a first little taste on it. And uh, we got to bust another freestyle, too, afterwards. And, and, and we won't delete it this time. I think that might have been me. That may have been this guy right here. Yeah, we're not sure where that one went. But yeah, yeah. It, it disappeared. Definitely once we yeah, wrap. We'll one, get another one. We'll, we'll get another we'll, one, uh, man. Record that and then maybe, I don't know, we'll drop it on you know, Instagram or something or, you know, yeah. the freestyle files. Kind of let it out. <laughs> it, it's, it's just fun. It's fun. Like whenever I – because like, like I'm saying, like I, I do it almost every day. Like I'm always on – Bust some freestyle, but when I could get into the room with another lyricist that likes to get it in and stuff, Articles like th there's almost like ready. yeah, there's like this. Okay, all right, like we've got the vibe in here. Even Kev, like you never freestyled before he met me. I've known him for like 14 years now, and now he'll come in and, occasionally. Yeah, no, but he'll surprise people because like we'll be up in the cipher or something with some people sometimes, and then and then Kev's like, all right, he steps up with his cowboy boots, and everyone's like, what the fuck is this cowboy doing? And then he'll come in there like start fast rapping and shit and talking about like. All the vicious stuff. I get nasty good. though. I feel like yeah. my freestyles. I, I, I tend to lean towards sex. So <laughs> you know, he turns that. into Big Papa. <laughs> get a little sideways He's real quick. Ben. <laughs> but it's fun. I mean, I have a good time. You know, because I, you know, going back when I met this guy 100 years ago, it's been forever now. Um, you know, that's what he was doing. He was chasing that. You know, mm -hmm. he was he was article. He was on the scene, yeah. and I was following around. You know, kind of like we got Andrew here off off uh, camera and Mike yeah, here. Shout out Andrew, Andrew yeah. solid lad over here. Yeah, I was kind of I was kind of doing what this guy's doing and just kind of filming him and and just trying to be, like create content. And yeah. this is back in like 2008, 2009. Yeah, it was a long time ago. You know, it was a long time ago. You were chasing it, man. You were hungry for it. You know, and it was well, fun. Do, to and see. then and then I fell off. Like so, yeah, I was like 2021, 20, like really hungry, getting it. And then fucking opiates caught up with me, bro. And like yeah. I, I I thought that shit made me so much better and so much more cool. And, like, I wanted to even re-record one of my whole albums high on opiates because, like, dog, that flavor will be so good. That project never got fucking done. Yeah. You know, and it's just, like, 
and, and then that's that thing I was talking about. There was like those couple years there in my late twenties, early thirties, where I was like, "Fuck, dog!" Like, I was more driven and on point and getting after it in twenty twenty one at that age than I am at like twenty nine. Mm. And like it fucked with me. And then until we started this podcast, like this honestly like saved me because like finally I was creating again. Like I was, it, this is like a, a verbal freestyle, right? Yeah. And, and like I can still have an impact with the words and like the message that I deliver. No, we don't have anybody telling us what to say on here. Nope. Um, so it, it's it's like almost scratching the same itch as like music did for me because I can come on here, be authentic you know spit some freestyle by talking randomly with people and like have some content that could help people like that was always the purpose for music for me was to make something that could help people you know mm. and honestly though like I, I don't even blame you though too because i feel like in my older years i see myself transitioning into podcasts because i love the comedy y'all yeah. see i'm shaking hands i'll be meeting with people I'm yeah here. i'm in dallas i'm in denver and stuff but like also too like i spend my i'd be watching podcasts more than listening to music nowadays yeah, like i'd be watching you guys million dollars worth the game mm-hmm. um back on fig just a bunch of podcasts like that and it's like because it's, it's just like soothing joe rogan yeah uh-huh. you know what i mean you, you sit there and you're like you you take something out of it and it sucks that sometimes that music actually takes from you. Like you said, it makes you think like, oh, popping these pills are cool. Doing yeah. that is, is cool. And like you, you start to get stuck in this mindset like, oh, you, you let's see who could get the highest. Like, mm. And it's like, bro, you're, self, you're hungry, but you're self-destructing. Yeah, that's and like your some, life ain't that's some young man shit. Yeah, and it, you're, you're right. trapping yourself. Yeah, and we all had to go like, through it. <laughs> we did. <laughs> you got we all had to go through it. And that's the thing. Not yeah. a lot of people survive to the other true. side. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. RP so to true. my brother. Like, you know what I mean? I have some people that we lose R. along R. the way. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you, you if you could save that one person. That's why even like when my messaging and even like as I move forward is like, how do I still like keep one foot in music, but still all the cool cool stuff and like, keep things moving and stuff and like that's like the hard balance is trying to find that yeah it is because we live in such a it's like you know there's just so many things happening now right between social media between youtube between podcasting music there's so many things coming out so much quicker than they ever have yeah. right and and even i struggle to keep up with it all you know and being in this business we kind of have to try to keep up with it but it's like man it can be overwhelming at times you know because yeah. that's why i was asking like where's the market going you know what are you what are you seeing because Everyone I talk to kind of has a different perspective on what's happening right now, whether it's social media, whether it's politics, whether it's this, whether it's that. Everybody kind of cares about something and wants to put their time into it, right? But the common theme, I feel like, is, you know, everyone, gen- I think, genuinely wants to be able to do what we're doing, yeah. right? And sit down. No one's looked at their phone since this thing started, right? Exactly. And that's the lost art. That's the beautiful piece. And I know we drive this home all the time for our, our you know, constant listeners and viewers. You've heard me say this, but it's like, man, this is the lost art right here. There's a time and a place for everything. And I think conversations yeah. and, and, you know, bouncing ideas off each other respectfully and having these discussions. You know, we've gotten heated on the show with people before, and, and I think that's okay. But it was handled respectfully. Handled so. respectfully. Like, you can disagree with people and still respect them. Yeah. And I've had... It's a conversation. Con- yeah, conversations yep. like that with people where, like, they're straight up disrespecting me because I disagree with them. And then later on, I'm getting apologies because I stayed centered. And mm-hmm. they're like, hey, you know, I was I was kind of out of line there. Like, I, yeah. I you know, even if we didn't agree, like, I still was kind of jumping down your throat a little bit. It's like, it's fine to disagree. Yeah. People will have different opinions. And that's okay. That's absolutely fine. Like, as long as we respect each other through that like we don't have to always agree as as humans you know and well that's kind of like the part we were talking about in the beginning that's how you're able like to grow from those pains sometimes you need to check yourself and be like i might be bugging i might not be right a lot of people want to lead with their ego and like you said they want to sit there and be like i'm right i'm this Mm -hmm. and sometimes even just stepping back and listening and stuff and it's like i'm not saying i'm mr gandhi or mr buddha i i I just spoke earlier (laughs) that they were calling me oh he beat the dude up at the show so sometimes i have my flaws too but like as long as you consistently try to grow and at least try to have the conversation you won't be stuck in that mindset Uh yep and i think i yeah i mean for me man going back i mean art can attest to this he met me when i was I don't know, 18, 19 or something like that. Angry. I was angry. I was an <laughs> asshole. You know, I might still be an asshole at times, but it's gotten better. Yeah, no, it's way better. It's gotten better. It's but better. Yeah, and, but I think that goes back to the point we were making earlier is just as you get older, you kind of feel like, all right, maybe I was a dick there. You know, maybe I can I can tighten up here, approach this a little bit differently. But I think that's also the, the point I'm trying to make here is just being around people that maybe have different beliefs or – Um, different ideas whether they're successful or not maybe they don't agree with you politically or not or you know whatever the case may be i I feel like it's important you know Mm -hmm. it's taught me a ton 
you know, and I, and I would encourage people to do it. Just sit down and have a conversation. Everyone wants to be a keyboard warrior. We see mm-hmm. so much of that. It's easier to sit behind. We, Jabronis. We had a guest Jabronis. last week, uh, Gabe, last week from the Denver Degenerates. He described it as like the cell phone is like a binky. It's yeah. everyone's comfort zone. They put their binky in and they get behind their comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, for and real. That stuck with me for the last week. And we just we see it so often. And well, that's so on one of the uh, one of the lines I have before the rave is like all the fake love in the club, all the fake love in the club. DM on IG, no love. You see me in person, fake hugs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, you were rocking with me on the internet, but as soon as you see me in person, now you act like I'm your yeah. best friend and stuff. And it's like, it is like they had that little binky in and they were dissing you. But as soon as they see you in person, like, hey, how you been? It's great. Oh, yeah. And it's like, but even that, you can't take it too personal because then you almost become the same way as them. You're like, you got to oh, take the high road. Got to take the high road. You know, and, and like, honestly, the high road is is I, I like to try to come up with some analogies here so when you take the high road you got to go uphill for a little bit right mm-hmm. like that takes extra effort to go up the hill like let's say the high road is a wa- is a walking path mm-hmm. and like it's steep and it's way high it's up. elevation yeah it's it's way higher than the low road so you gotta like walk a mile up in the air for this shit and then like so, so that's hard you have to be diligent and then and then once you're up there though you realize that like it's called the high road because all that bullshit drama that people like to gossip about and what's on the grapevine. Now let me sip the tea. What's the tea this week? And that kind of bullshit. Like I have people ask me sometimes, they're like, tell me some juicy drama. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like that is, (laughs) that's so dumb. Like, don't you want something more value? So like when you take the high road, it it literally is like this different mindset where, where you are okay being different and it doesn't matter if, like people talk shit because it's just like you're like dude doesn't matter it's just noise but it's hard to get up there though you have to like walk up that path it's steep as it <laughs> yeah and, and then it's and then it has that cl- that cliff edge cuz you could still see the, the low road from the from the high road and you could be slipping slipping off the cliff a little bit like you like start <laughs> you start focusing too long down there you start slipping off you're like oh shit let me get back up to the high road Debate about him any moment. Yeah, I don't know. And no, sometimes it could even. I, I hear what you're saying because sometimes it could even be family and stuff. Because I grew up where they be talking shit, <laughs> like you know what I mean. But that's like and, loving shit, and, right? And it's loving or, shit, but sometimes it becomes they cross a little the line. Ta- they cross the line they cross and stuff. The line. Like People I know, mama, I love my mama, but sometimes she be extra and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're crossing the line right now, ma. You realize this? <laughs> She's like, who wants to watch? I, like before this, I was like, I'm on my way to a podcast. Who's gonna watch you? Why you want to be on? A podcast? I was like, damn. <laughs> but then when she's at work. With her friends, oh my god, he's doing music, great things. I'm like, it's like, what the hell? Like, they just be, oh, you know, funny. you she, gotta take she, it with love. She was just upset because you weren't hanging out to eat her meal that she cooked. That's why. That's why she was acting like that. Switch the diet, mama. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, like, hanging out with these yahoos is more important than eating my food. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, that's they have funny, Brussels sprouts right? over there. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, oh, that's th- great. They have cruciferous vegetables over there. <laughs> cruciferous, <laughs> cruciferous vegetables. vegetables. <laughs> that's wild. Oh, that shit is too funny, man. But but it's true and, and like there once you escape to the high road and, and you're on that and you really start living it and you're staying diligent and staying on it, man, like yeah. what the the doors that begin to open from being authentic. I, I it always goes back to the, like we're always talking about being hashtag authentic. authenticity, right? Yeah, we're always talking about this shit. <laughs> yeah, it seems to always come up. Right no, there. continue. We're on some. Was I? Yeah. Okay. Raw rant. The raw rant. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, here's the thing, listeners, viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in. But you're the only one that can do it. Ain't no one going to fucking pull the cover off you in the morning. Like, mm-hmm. you're the only one. Like, you're trying to get on that weight loss or, the, or like, whatever you're trying to do, change your, your diet or, like, your food. Like, no one's going to do it for you. Yep. And, and it's like all this dependent shit, like, oh, poor me. Yeah, fucking poor me, too. Like, when I was on opiates and shit, bro, and, and I was, like, in the, in the bad place, like, trying to get off of that, I wasn't going to rehab. Thank God I had my friends. I had my friends to keep hold, hold me accountable, but I still felt like shit. No one did that for me, bro. I had to fucking do that. It had to yourself. suck. It had to suck. And, like, sometimes you got to go through the suck. Sometimes it's fucking three weeks. Sometimes it's six months. Sometimes it's a fucking year or more. And, like, you just got to go battle mode. Mm-hmm. And it's like, f- fuck all this noise. You know, so I'll, I'll get, uh, like, positively aggressive on this podcast, like, talking about this kind of stuff. Because it's, like, really, anyone who wants to sit here and try to judge on my hustle, like, you hustling, like, you want to sit here and judge my hustle, but, like, I don't even know what you're doing. Yeah. Like, you, you know, so, so it's like, it's <laughs> right. like, what, what does that matter? 
So I guess that's my little raw rant there. It's, it's like, fuck the well, noise. No, I like what you're saying because it's like my favorite quote is like KRS-One. He's all like, if you hating on another person that only has a dollar because he has a dollar, you both two fools that are broke with a dollar. <laughs> but if you figure out like, hey, how can we put our dollar together? Now we got two dollars. Mm-hmm. And how can we turn that to three, four? Instead of sitting there hating on the next person, it's like we could build up or it's like I'm going to keep pushing with my one little dollar and yeah. be on my way because that that's taking too much energy. It's a good analogy for sure. Because, yeah, I think, you know, going back to what we were talking about earlier, are people trying to fuck you? They want to work with you? You know, and, and in this business, entertainment, music, podcasting, you name it, there's someone trying to fuck somebody. Mm-hmm. And it's it, and it's happening all the time. And it's not because you're good looking either, Kevin. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> with no Vaseline. <laughs> fuck with no lube. I mean, we just saw it happen, um, you know, in the major podcast market. Theo Vaughn, Tom Segura, those guys, mm-hmm. they just got fucked over. And, and Theo was very aggressive about it. They, they were working with a, an advertising agency that, you know, they were doing ad reads for. Yeah. And these guys got fucked out like $3.4 million. And, and mm. you know, sure, they, they're on tour. These guys do okay. They don't, you know, they don't necessarily need that for the livelihood. But that's not the point. The point is they made a deal. Yeah. And, th- th- and it's, a, it's a big deal right now in the pod beef world, if you will. You know, Theo's called these guys out. I've never seen Theo do something mm-hmm. like that. And it's, you know. I guess, you know, to reiterate the point, somebody's trying to fuck somebody at any moment. Yeah. You know, everyone can look legit, trying to get scammed. We see it happen all the time. People are always trying to get fucked over. And But that's what I'm saying. That's people, like, that don't do good business or, mm-hmm. like, are just moving for the next opportunity to be hungry. Because when you do good business, you realize that you don't got to do nobody wrong. If anything, you want to build your people up. You want your team winning. Because, yes. like, when I go out to eat, I don't want them to know who's going to pay the bill. Like, they, mm-hmm. they're like, any of them could pay the bill rather yeah. than people scratching their heads and like, stuff. I can't go eat dinner with my boys tonight. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> like, because yeah. we all made something of ourselves and we're not stressing and, and we, we feel good mm-hmm. and stuff. And even if they don't have it, we going to help them out because mm-hmm. it's like, brother, like you said, you ha- you were lucky enough to have your friends. Some mm-hmm. people don't have friends around them. Oh, yeah. Some people, like, you know what I mean, are, like, by themselves. And that's okay, though, too. Like, you might find someone and stuff. Or you, as long as you find comfort in yourself, sometimes that should be enough. Man. Well, and even, even what you're uh, saying – earlier is how you pay your people like hey if i'm doing this and i'm if doing this like i'm gonna pay you for your time like that's good business that's not asking for handouts handouts don't don't exist like i'm suspicious of handouts like if someone's trying to hand me something i'm like i, I would rather earn it please yeah. may i please earn that like i don't want your handout it's like you see these stupid ass messages on facebook if you can spell a girl's name uh, that starts with an S and ends with an A, I will cash app you twenty five hundred dollars. Like how many fucking idiots are giving out their cash app information <laughs> scam. over I've, the I've stupid ass seen, shit? I've never seen that. It's so fucking. I mean, I've been scammed in other ways. It's so but... dumb, bro. Damn, it's a pyramid scam, definitely. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's like this this whole like instant satisfaction thing like sure you can find that in certain areas, uh, but it's not sustainable and in. You, we all need to experience all emotions in this life. Like, yeah. we have to feel sad sometimes, and that's okay. Like, we can have a couple bad days in a row. Like, like there's been weeks, even though, like, I feel like I'm somewhat of a pillar for motivation. Like, no, there's weeks where I'm like, ah, I'm not feeling it. Like, I'm having a hard time, you know, and I just have to ex- expect, like, accept yeah. that. Like, it's okay to, to not always be good. Mm-hmm. But too many people are, like, trying to act like their shit don't stink, and it's mm-hmm. like, but those stinky shits are healthy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going with that one, but it's just like, we'll, we'll keep going. I, I, I'll keep going. So we, I got I to pass the mic. I got to pass the mic. <laughs> I got to pass it. Well, I mean, look, I think we're all kind of saying the same thing here, just in a different uh, dialect, if you will. I think we all kind of share that same desire to be successful and, yeah. you know, battle against the, the bullshit that's out there and, constantly try to evolve with the market you know i think that's that's what i always look at where the trends things are changing mm-hmm. you know we look at like the nfl for example right they just moved to youtube that's oh, a big deal right they had that is. huge contract with direct tv for so long now they're with youtube everything yeah. seems to be you know youtube seems and we love you youtube thanks for you know hey, taking good care of us i love you thanks um, you, too. you know that seems to be where a lot of the market is going a little bit <laughs> Um, you know, that's the big thing right YouTube, now. YouTube, Kick, um, all those Patreon. Patreon. Stuff. See, mm-hmm. and I feel like Patreon is kind of, I, I mean, we, we did Patreon for a bit. Mm-hmm. Didn't yield great results. I mean, we did some things over there that, that definitely earned us some money. It all just money, takes but, a lot of work. But I, I also just feel like Patreon's kind of fallen off just a little bit. You know, and it's like, what's the next thing going to be? Because we, we don't do the tick. Do you do TikTok? 
Uh, I, I have a TikTok and stuff. I'll be uploading on there. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been reluctant to get on there, but it's like, man, should I should I just do it? Music wise, no, it dude, does don't give you me some views. Even you can't say that because there's one night when I was like, all right, dude, it's time for us to venture into TikTok world. And I was hard and, no. And, and I said I said <laughs> I'm I'm going to do it, but since there's two of us, it we have to agree. I didn't agree. And yeah. he couldn't agree. I still don't know though. So I didn't make the fucking count for okay? content and stuff. You know? I feel like it's like. Because, like, people like Joe Rogan and stuff, that's where I kind of, like, learned to, like, jump into multiple places. Because I, right now I got a YouTube, a YouTube short. I got a TikTok. Uh, I just got back on Facebook. And I was in on it, but I got back on it for my music, for the yeah. ads. Uh, Instagram. I'm gonna have to add you there. And, um, but what I'm learning is that you could distribute your short content through all those places. And your main channel will have your YouTube. And so you'll have your followers all watch your long stuff because people are like, you know, they're, they're yeah. junkies for, for attention. Yeah. So your small contents will keep some, oh, like, look at this. I seen you over here. Or are you popped up on my TikTok over here? Like, yeah. I have people mm-hmm. hit me up like, oh, I seen you on TikTok. I'll be like, oh, I forgot I posted that. I just, like, have my thing already adjusted to the algorithm to upload for me and stuff. Because that's the beautiful thing, too. We have, like, things like Hootsuite where you could drop things and upload it for you and you don't even have to sit there because i know that's like a struggle too was when i was starting tiktok i'm like what am i gonna post what am i gonna talk about Mm -hmm. like people are gonna watch my stuff and now like i have like 105 videos maybe more than that and like 64 drafts like you know what i mean like you you start to learn it a little bit and it's like not the worst thing because you don't want to follow the trend that's what it is a little bit Mm -hmm. but then you realize where it's like Oh, but let me do it my way. I don't specifically have to follow the trend. I can still upload my content and get followers through here. Well, that That's seems true. to be the thing with all this. It's like we don't know. Like the trend tra- changes daily almost. Yeah. It's like you don't know what you could post a video tomorrow, and now that's the next big thing, the next big meme, the next big viral thing. I think that's that's kind of where the market's at, right? Like that quick content. Everyone's that quick hit. And then if they if they dig it, because I'm guilty of this with like cooking stuff. I love watching like cooking shorts. Mm. Those 60 second, like, love those. they're like, man, look at this meal. <laughs> You know, click here to watch how I made it all the way, and I get sucked into that shit. I'll spend hours like that. That's my social media binge is watching guys cook shit. I, I yo, I, I love that shit too. Like all the Texas stuff, the food oh, house. Oh man, man, those grills, those wagyu, man. You be looking at that like, man, I want a steak right now. <laughs> I'll be sitting, yeah, my my tummy's rumbling. I'm sitting there in bed watching this shit. Like, can I make this? Let me go back. <laughs> he's all like, he's all like prepping the menu for the next NASCAR race that he hosts and shit. Yes. He's all like, I know what I'm about to make this. Dude, weekend. most of that shit I get off of there for sure. I, I had a feeling. I yeah. had a feeling. He said no nachos. <laughs> nachos. We have the nachos. We should do that for NASCAR this weekend. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. you know, see ideas. <laughs> I mean, dude, it's 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 good, but uh, I mean, that, it's just so fun, man, to get you back in here and like and like just connect. Um, and that's part of the, part of what's important too. Like when when you start having the ability, you have to start sh- sharing the the fruits of the labor, right? Yeah. Because you know, there's only so much that one person can have. I guess even in a lot of different senses. But it's, it's even like doing this pod. Like, it, it was just Kevin and I at first. Like, we were just doing it ourselves. And then we're like, all right, like, let's start getting some people involved. And then now, after like four and a half years of doing this, we, we can we can help like a suicide awareness uh, nonprofit, you know, get 300 more people that start being interested in what they're doing. Or like, mm-hmm. you, you know, an up and coming artist, like, we can, you know, give them a platform to, you know, get their stuff going. And, and once you start giving back in that kind of manner, like however you can, but giving people a voice, oh man! Like I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about one of the selfish things about what we do here, and that's inter- having you here tonight. It's 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 having guests here, and and like once you when you're done, like we can tell when our guests had a good time, and it, when you leave and you're like, oh that was such a good episode, like that feels the best to us because we're down. like we're like man, Israel came in to share his time with us. He, sh- he, he shared his stories with us. He gave some insight on things he's dealing with. You know, he kept it real on, on here. And, it you know, he's probably looking forward to it. It made his night. Like, like we love that we get to do that. Like, it means so much. And you putting on the label and, and, and putting on people and, and having belief in them, man, I bet you there was some nights that were there like, dog, well, he believes in me. So, like, I can do this tonight. Like, we're, like, yeah. they're, like, kind of in their own head with some shit. And they're, like, you know, oh, fuck that. Israel got my back. Like, he's... He's about it. He believes in me. I could believe in me. It's, it's, it's stuff like that that's really important. And and the more that people can escape from looking at their phones all the time mm-hmm. and, you know, really being selfish about, like, being their authentic self. 
Because if you're not being your authentic self, then you're being like almost selfish to yourself. Like you're not yeah. allowing yourself to fully flourish. And then being the best to help people around you, right? Because that's ultimately what it comes down to. Like even if you have kids, whatever legacy you're trying to leave behind, like you want to leave a legacy behind that means something. And a lot of, that's for kids for a lot of things. For me, I don't know if I'm going to have kids. So it's like this podcast is like a legacy. Your baby. Yeah, that we can leave behind. Exactly. So it's like it's important to like have those type of pursuits in your life mm -hmm. and at least like have some sort of clarity to understand and see that. And it seems like you have had that sense. And you see, and then that, like, that makes me feel bad. I, I had a gift for y'all, but I forgot it. So I'm about to get to y'all next time. It was a picture frame from one of my old music videos and oh, stuff. Nice. I had an extra one. I was like, man, I'm going to give it to my homies and stuff. But like I said, the Uber was switching on me so yeah. much. <laughs> made me forget it and stuff. I'll get that to y'all next time. I mean, you know it's going to get hung up in here. Everyone's oh, going to yeah. see it. It'll go in the studio. Yeah, for sure. everyone's going to be seeing that. Hey, wherever y'all want to put it. It's, it's it. the thought that counts. For yes. sure. I was all like, hell yeah. I was all like, man, this must. I find, the second time going back, I feel like I need a gift for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, just having that mindset alone already tells me your character. It speaks volume to your character, right? Because a lot of folks are like, like we talked about. They're just looking for a free ride. Hey, I'll just piggyback off this. Let me springboard on that. I can tell you're not that way. No, I want. I seen our first episode. I was like, man, that was so much fun. I was like, I was like, best conversation and stuff. I was like, I'm gonna come back see what they've been on. I'm sure, they want to see what I've been on and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, and dude. it's like just the conversation. He's like, man, I wish I would hang out with these dudes more. These are cool. <laughs> <laughs> and like even just like your guys' brotherhood for e each other, it makes me think of like one of my best friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I said, small circle, and it's all like that's one person. Like when we hang out, we 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 vibe with each other. We're both so different. But, like, you know, when we come together, it's like, oh, we have that respect for each other and stuff. Got to have it, man. And it's rare. It's rare. Yeah. Not everybody has it. How long does it take? I mean, obviously, like, I've known you for a long-ass time. And, like, yep. it's hard to compare to, like, 14 years of a relationship. Yeah. But, like, I feel like. Are we in a relationship? Yes. We're definitely in a relationship. <laughs> but, but, so. Pause. But, so, <laughs> I'm, like, 100, 100, bet. <laughs> fucking, um, I feel like I knew after like six months of knowing you that I was like, okay, like, because Ke Kevin's the newest to the clique. Like, yep. there's like seven of us, yep. and you were seven. Like, we we yeah. had we had an established crew already for like yeah. a long time. Yeah, because the guys you know, yeah. you've known for thirty years, tw twenty five years. Yeah, yeah, long time. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but but it's it's hard to find those people because. I'll have people that, you know, were from my past. They try to approach me and you can tell that they're like trying to rekindle a friendship and stuff. And I, I just, we, I can sense that I, I don't, I can't trust their intentions. Like, I, I don't know where you're really yeah. at with things. Like, yeah, we used to be tight like that, but obviously like we didn't stay connected for a reason. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, in, went different. it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting, but you still want to have respect for those people. But I, I don't know where I'm going with this. I guess it's like, you know, not everyone is right to let in, obviously. The same but. people you start with ain't the same people you're going to finish with and mm. stuff. Because now I feel that, though, too. It's like you do meet someone and you're like, oh, we're going to build for a long time and stuff. Like the people that mm. are on the label, I feel like I'm going to build with them for a long time. When I met them, I generally have that brotherhood with them. And even just like the conversation we had this last week and while talking with Beats and how the conversation went a little deeper and they were actually like caring about my mental health. I'm like, oh, outside this music stuff, they genuinely care about me mm -hmm. and stuff. And that makes you want to like, you know, invest in the friendship more is like people that want to build in you rather than people that are just calling you up where you know like hey you going out this weekend or did you hear this mm -hmm. you know what i mean that brings like dark energy and like oh if you doing this to them what are you gonna do to me mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know like and that's like how you separate that like the good from the bad you're like i'm gonna invest more time in these relationships that are making me feel good and feeding me yes. and actually building me up rather than these that are making me feel bad tearing me down or really just wasting my time yeah no, and that's the thing is time is valuable. And I feel like, yeah, that hits on a good point because the older I get, you know, like, I'm, you know, I've been friends with these guys for a long time here in Colorado. You know, I'm originally from New England. So it's like I came out here, met these guys and they've been good friends since I've been here. And it's like when new new folks pop into the picture and they want to hang out all the time, I'm like, man, number one, either I don't have the time because yeah. right, I'm a busy guy. Or I'm like, I, you know, I, just, I don't really dig the vibes, you know, and, and that's part of the vetting process like you're talking about. You, you can kind of start to see, is this going to be an asset or a value to my life? Is this person, because the greatest gift you can give someone is the gift of your time, mm -hmm. right? I truly believe that. Yeah. And it's like, is this person worthy of my time? And, and I also, you know, I say that and I also piggyback off that saying, you know, 
it's it's good to be nice to people. I'll yeah. always stop and chat with people that either recognize us or you know maybe someone's not having a good day or just take time to be nice to people. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to come eat ribs at my house on Sunday, yeah. right? Yeah. But you still be a good person. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be you know going to the NASCAR and, race and that's together. That's okay because sometimes there's that boundaries too where like not everybody's supposed to be in the the main circle and that's right. okay. Like maybe we're here for the moment and sure you know what I mean we'll move forward and. That's cool. Plus, you might not even like my mama's spicy ass cooking. You know? Oh, it's spicy. <laughs> it's spicy. Oh, bring on the heat. What was that picante? Oh, uh, the green chili, like yeah. fire, fire. Ooh, yeah. Oh, green yeah. chili. I oh, mean, you so see, I should have brought you guys some of that. Y'all would have been loving that. I love green chili, man. <laughs> so see, good. See, next time I know mama, they want your. Ch- I might not eat it, but they gonna eat it. Yeah. <laughs> now does she? Do, now does mama do pork on a fork style, or is it more of like a like a Santiago stew? You know, blended. Yeah, style? like Santiago's burritos Ooh. and stuff. Whips it up and stuff. Actually, uh, my little sister just started selling burritos and stuff. That's how good they are and oh, stuff. Shit. They're yeah. like they're like downtown. Like after yeah. after all the clubs. Well, she started because she's she's yeah. the first one in college and stuff. So she mm-hmm. started selling it on campus and stuff. Oh yeah. But it's because she cooks just as good as my mom and stuff. Mm. But the recipe that I even had to go learn this week and stuff. I was over there and she's all trying to teach you how to make that salsa man i was burning up like can we make it less hot <laughs> that sounds delicious though you're like you're having a full cleanse you know man i was you know America. it's hot when you sweating yeah <laughs> like oh shit <laughs> bring on the heat when, when my nose starts to sweat i'm like yeah that was good that was good <laughs> it's like I, I don't know what happened at some age all of a sudden my nose started sweating when i was eating hot stuff <laughs> i don't know what was going on with that I'm not sure if my nose sweats. I usually, my forehead will. Mm, mm. Yeah, same. But yeah, it starts beating up. I, I think what it was, and I'll just go ahead and admit to when I was a fucking idiot, because um, I was taking a lot of Adderall, mm. and that shit would make me start sweating. I would sweat out my nose, and I feel like when I started doing that, like it like opened up those pores or something. And then so now, and I haven't taken that shit in a long time. I, I was like another thing that I cut out. Nah, I but, feel that. Yeah, I was like, fuck that. Um, but now my nose sweats, and I feel like it may have been like a side effect from doing it's, too much. I'm missing the Adderall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nah, that, that Adderall too. Same thing. It's like they they so said good. I had ADHD and stuff, needed it to focus. But mm. it's like you take it at a certain point that it helps you, but then you start abusing it and taking yeah. too much of it. You're like, is this really helping me, or am I just becoming addicted to something yeah. else? Just, just another. They, yeah. The pharmaceutical companies love those lifetime, lifelong. Uh, fucking they get buyers. away with drug deals though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Backed by the government. <laughs> That's a whole nother podcast right there. I could talk on that for a long time. Uh, I don't want to get kicked off of uh, the platform, so I'm not going to go into that. Yeah, we respect you, YouTube, and you're welcome for giving you consistent content every single week. Uh, so so <laughs> what, what we got next, um, um, we asked you this next time. I mean, last time. There you, will you, be a next time. Yeah, and there will be a next time. We're going to ask you again. You Do you remember, do you remember the question? He's Let's ready see. for it. Let's you, see. I'm ready for you it. You remember? So, yeah. One piece of advice for humanity. Yo. The whole world is going to hear this. What's, gonna, what's that piece of advice going to be to help everyone be better? I'm going to put it in the jacket. Y'all can see that. Yeah. Hold it up just a little bit more. Right oh, there. yeah. There it is. Yep, bullseye. Be a visionary. It takes a lot of work to be a visionary because sometimes people might not believe in your path or see your vision. Or see what you're trying to plan. And it's that's okay because you're the one who invests in your dream. And kind of like what we talked in the whole podcast, as long as you're loving what you do and loving what you're doing, you're not going to fall off of your goal and your dream. And you're going to keep pushing. And those are the people that they usually call visionaries. So I would say to help humanity, be a visionary. Mm, love it. Mm. So to define visionary... And not not uh, Webster's, but what what's what's like your definition? You said like going after it, get like what? How can somebody be a visionary that's not in music? That's you know what whatever they do like what regardless. Well, like even like let's say you want to go, you're in law school or you want to go to culinary school, and you don't feel like you could do it. Just start putting in the hours and working on on it Mm -hmm. and envision yourself. Start to see yourself already there. Start to craft yourself like you're already there. Even if you don't believe that you're going to get there, you got to have the vision to believe and see it and and wake your inner person. Because I I believe that, like, we live this life before everything happens for a reason. And once you start to set up certain situations in your life and you see it, you start to envision things and stuff. And um, some of the greatest people in this world have been visionaries nipsey has been called a visionary kanye has been called a visionary 
Uh, Picasso has been called a visionary. And that's honestly what made me start call my, my artist name is visionary was all those great people was like, oh, man, it's, they had a vision that nobody else seen. Mm-hmm. And it's just the, having the belief in yourself. Mm. Powerful. Mm. Good, juicy stuff right there, man. I love it, man. You know, you're just you can tell you're just an authentic person. You care about people. You work hard. And it, it's going to it's going to it's going to carry. It's going to carry definitely for sure. So this is definitely the point of the show where you're going to want to plug everything. Oh yeah, this, and everything's going to be in the show notes <laughs> down below for the viewers, for the the uh, listeners. Just scroll down, get in touch with this man. Where do they go? Um, you can find me at Instagram at Israel the Visionary, or you could look me up at YouTube at Israel Clips. Um, on TikTok at Israel the Visionary. Also for all my four ten. 20 friendly friends stop by at lemonade at 405 washington street um have some of the best um flour i've I've had in town i would say they definitely calm my nerves and anxiety and stuff so i love tapping in with them they're always great friendly people always treat me nice um also to if you guys didn't see this episode go ahead and see the last episode we did mm. where we talked about love junkie and a bunch more stuff and um, actually, tonight after this, I'm going to be performing at River Bar. Um, they host open mics and ciphers. They're doing their Wolf Wednesdays there. I'm excited to do that competition tonight. Oh, hell um, yeah. And, yeah, you could catch me at Israel the Visionary. Love being on Discussion Combustion, man. Y'all family. Hell, hell yeah, yeah, brother. Man. That's fucking awesome. It's so so great to have you back in the seat, this time in the couch. Um what was what's Palpatine say? We'll be watching your career with great interest. Yeah, you, you know, of course we're gonna be doing that, man. And uh, shit, I you go and crush it tonight too. Mm. I just I love these type of conversations. They they the, doing this on a Wednesday definitely is like a good break to the work week and all this other shit because I get to get in here, sit across the table with people like you, sit next to one of my best friends as always. You know, shoot the shit, have a real conversation. Thank you for being an honest person, upfront, being real, showing your heart. Um, you know, you help people through that. I can tell. Like, you've motivated me. Sometimes I see some of your shit, too, and I'm like, fuck yeah, uh, he's getting it today. My boy's <laughs> out, out there getting it today. You know, it just it makes me excited. So, uh, yeah. yeah, everybody check out all of Israel's uh, Israel the Visionary stuff, man. Definitely one of Denver's most talented artists. and. Such an honor to have you on the podcast again, man. Three projects on the way. Look out. We're going back to back with it. Hell yeah. Big stuff coming for sure. We're going to have to get some live stuff going. We're going to do some live podcasts and go into 2024. We're going to have okay. to get you involved. For sure. Um, you know, everyone's going to want to stay tuned to that for sure. Yeah, but uh, crazy. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going wild, man. We're going full send. Always full send. Let it rip. Tater chip. Believe and achieve. Be good to yourselves. You deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> I did not end that. <laughs>